Well, hello and welcome to the show. I'm so glad you've joined us this week. It's that time of year when we take time to be thankful for what we have in life. And it's a time of year when you want to take time to have fun with friends and family. And we have all of that coming up right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. Gonna take a ride on one true horse. You know, as Thanksgiving rolls around every year, we think about founding forefathers and we think about our heritage as Americans. And this year is certainly no different. Uh, this is one of those years we've seen all kinds of things happen in, in recent years that have changed the face and the scope of America. And probably more than any time in the past, it feels to me like I need to be thankful for where I live. I need to be thankful for the men and women who are daily putting themselves in harm's way so that we can do the things we enjoy. I need to be thankful for the men and women in the emergency services, for the men and women in law enforcement who are out there every single day giving their all, hoping to go home tonight, hoping to make it back to loved ones and family and friends for the same holidays we enjoy. Every now and then, I stop and think about America as I know it. And I, I'm very blessed, I've seen almost all of it. I've watched the sun come up on the East Coast and I've watched it set over the West Coast. And I've seen all of Alaska and Hawaii and I've enjoyed America at its greatest. And I've had the opportunity to do that with my family and with friends. And as I, as I look at the holiday season this year and I hear people saying things that sound like America's facing hard times. It just comes to me that, you know what, this is a time when each of us is gonna be held accountable for how we help keep America what it is. It's a time when our personal decisions, more than ever before, our personal decisions in our lives are probably being weighed and counted much more than we realize. And I'm thankful for the opportunity to be a part of a country where we matter, where we count, where what we have to say has a lot to do with the life and liberty that we live. The Republic of America was founded on men who were willing to be weighed. The men who, the men who signed the Declaration of Independence understood when they signed the Declaration of Independence that it was at all costs they had to win. There was no backing up, there was no going back. They knew win or die was their options. And so when they signed their names to the Declaration of Independence, they understood it is my personal actions that are gonna make the difference. And you know what I believe? I believe in America today it is still the same way. It is my personal actions that are going to make the difference, your personal actions that are going to make the difference. And I, for one, I am thankful to God to live in a country where we actually count that much. It is the holiday season and we do intend to have as much fun as we can. And we know we're facing a lot of indoor riding and it's time to, for us to just kind of lighten things up and have some fun with our horses. So we want to share some games with you today that we do as friends and family. We're very blessed. Uh, today we have Jesse with us and um, she works at the Powderhorn Ranch for Diamond Ranches and has ridden with me for several years. And Lisa works for us uh, up in Lovell and has worked for me also for four or five years. And so it's great to have friends and family and just have a really good time. And so we're gonna show you some games. We're gonna start off with uh, Australian Pursuit. So what we've done, and these guys all know the rules, but I'm gonna explain them to you anyways. We've set four markers in the arena. Now here's the rules. You have to stay outside of the markers, but you can come as close to them as possible. And you can ride defensively, right? So you can try to push your opponent outside the markers. Now there's no loping and there's no touching your opponent's horse. You can't whack them, kick them, take their bridle, Kurt, none of that stuff. Bummer. Right? None of the stuff that might Bummer. be much more fun. So it's a trotting race. So I'm gonna set these guys up around the arena I call it from the inside and I'm gonna call it and when they start walking and then they start trotting. You can do this with one person you know, beside yourself. Two people can play this game, three people, 20 people. It doesn't matter as many, the more the merrier, the more you have, the more fun you're gonna have. 
but it's just a trotting race. And as you get past, you have to come to the inside. You cannot lope. So you're encouraging your horse to go faster, but you can't hang on his face to slow him down. He has to rate off your body, okay? So if you're hanging on his face, I'm gonna holler out at you to get off of his face. If he lopes, you have to come to a complete stop and then start again, okay? If you get past during the complete stop, you're out. Anytime you get past, you have to come to the inside. Let's say you get pushed inside the bucket. If you get pushed inside the bucket, you have to circle and go back around it. If during that time you get past, you're out. So basically, you have to stay in a trot, stay outside the buckets, and don't get past. That's the rules. Questions? Okay, let's start by going to our left. And uh, Kurt, let's put you over there uh, parallel to the pegboard. Trent, you stay right where you're at. Didi, I want you back over here, the other side of that blue bucket. Okay. And um, Jesse, right here between Didi and Trent, and Lisa between Trenton and Kurt. Okay. So I'll give them a chance to get in position. Now remember, the goal is really to be having fun, right? That's what we should be doing with our horses all the time. But every now and then we just need a game to lighten things up. Okay, go ahead and walk your horses. Now you want to stretch this walk out. You want these horses starting to move. And go ahead and trot. All right, so the race is on. Look out, Lisa, Trent's coming up behind you. Don't let him catch you. Kurt looks to me like he's going to lap everybody. That's a trotting son of a gun. Dee Dee is back here bringing up the drag, looking pretty slow. Jesse's going to get up. Jesse's going to make a move on Trent. Kurt's got a lope. Full stop. Better go. Kurt's horse needs some work on that stop department. Right? Oh, Trent almost passed Lisa, but not quite. Trent just got passed by Jesse, so Trent's out. Jesse's coming up on the inside. Come on, Lisa, push her off that Trent, can. You're out. There you go. Trent and I are on the inside. Dee Dee's safe. Kurt's got a long ways to go before he can catch up to Dee Dee, but I'd say Dee Dee's not catching anybody today. Lisa, the race here is Lisa and Jesse. If Lisa can, oh, that was close. If Lisa can keep pushing Jesse outside, it's not going to happen. It's almost over. It's almost over, and it is over for Lisa. Wow, Kurt! Holy Jake smokes! Kurt's All right, Kurt's coming up. Me. Kurt is coming up. I want to see Kurt put me. Didi to. Come on, Kurt, put her to rest. You can get her. That little horse of Didi's isn't moving fast enough to get out of its own way. Come on now, you can do this, Didi. Watch out! You better ride defensively. Catch him on the corners. Jesse, you got a long ways to go to catch up, and that horse of Kurt's is traveling. You're got a lot of work to do. All right, so now you're going to see the competitive spirit of Dee Dee. She's going to start riding a little defensively. And if you watch Dee Dee's horse, she'll pin her ears at Kurt's oh, horse. She's him. not going to let this happen, right? Oh, and Kurt lopes and has to stop. There you go. Fix that stop. Good no, deal. That's what makes go. this game fun is it's a oh, training me. game. You find the problems in your horse. Dee Dee's going to stay out there just because Kurt's horse keeps Busted into a lope, but Kurt, you better watch out because Jesse's coming up. You got a girl on in front and a girl behind, and they're both gonna kick your butt here if you're not careful. All right. Push him over there, Dee Dee. Push him over there and then cut back to your corner. Oh no, don't let him on the inside. Don't let him on the inside. There you go. Keep pushing him. It's almost over for Dee Dee. Oh man, she's fighting valiantly. Yep, it's coming up. Oh, and Kurt lopes again. Has to fix it, and he gives valuable ground to Jesse, and Jesse doesn't need him to open too many doors. He can't open too many doors. Don't hang on his face. Oh, you got a gift from Jesse. She loped. Good for her. She loped. That was a free gift. Dee Dee, you're gaining again. The two of them keep having trouble with this lope. All righty. We're going to give you guys two more laps to make a change. You got to have a change in the leaderboard and two more laps. All right, Jesse. Come on, Jesse. You can catch him. <clears throat> Come on, Kurt. Put that little sorrel horse to bed. You can do this. Come on, your big old long swinging buckskin horse. He can out trot Ooh. this little sorrel any day. Come on now. Oh, I don't know. I don't see it happening. I see the lead gaining. Oh, Jesse's falling further behind. We got one lap left before we declare Dee Dee the winner. Oh, Kurt, are you going to let your mom win that way? Jesse's falling further. Oh, Jesse's gaining on Kurt because Kurt had to come to a stop again. Right? This, I love this. I love the fact that you test your horse. You find out where your horse is and you test them. You put them to work 
in that situation. Perfect. All Look right, Dee Dee maintained her lead. Oh, I was thinking that was it. Yeah, that was. You're oh. good. You're golden. We always try to make sure our games in some way improve our horse. I don't want to have fun just at the expense of my horse. In other words, I don't want to go race and thrash around and end up with my horse hot and stupid, but I want to make sure that he ends up better, better broke, better trained. So the last game allows you to teach him to rate your speed off your seat. You saw Kurt having to really work on his stop. He knows he's got to go back to work on that now. This game is quite a bit different. We use the first one as a warm up game. This one is a lot of fun, but it's a lot more about getting your horse broke and accustomed to crazy things, right? So we call this whip tag. We started it several years ago. Uh, my brothers and I just kind of were fooling around one day and, and it kind of developed and um, we've done it in clinics ever since. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass out three of these colored whips and I'm gonna start by being what we call the attacker. Okay, so I, I'm gonna give Kurt a, a defender, I'm going to make, or not a defender, but I'm just going to call him a whip, and I'm going to call Trent a whip, and I'm going to call Lisa a whip, okay? Now, Dee Dee and Jesse are defenders. Now, this one's a little more complicated. The defenders have to do their best to stop me from touching the whips. On the other hand, the whips can hand off their whip to a defender and become a defender, okay? Now, they can't, Jesse, you ready? They can't holler at Jessie and throw it and have her miss it. They can throw it, but she has to catch it. If Jessie, go ahead and throw it back. If Jessie misses it, they're out, okay? So if you throw your whip to somebody and they don't catch it, then you're out. You shouldn't have thrown that far, okay? So the goal is to be the last person in the arena that the whip, that the attacker has not touched. That's your goal. But your goal also is to work as a team. Your goal is to work as a team to defeat the attacker. You can't remove their whip. You can just frustrate them because they can't get anybody out. Every time two whips go out, one of them gets dropped. So let's say I touch Trent. He has to hand his whip off to one of the defenders. But if I touch Trent and I touch Kurt, one of them drops their whip and one of them hands it off. That's the rules, a little bit complicated, but honestly, a really fun game. Now, there's some other rules. You can't whack your opponent's horse. As much as you want to, you can't whack your opponent, right? It's a touch game, touching the horse doesn't count. You have to touch your opponent with the whip. If they want to defend themselves and make it so you can't touch them, that's acceptable too. We right? like to use games to teach respect and character of each other. So, <laughs> fairness and respect of each other. So it is fun to play and have fun, but it still has to be safe. Absolutely. All right, so you guys all understand the rules? Okay, so now here's the hard part. I go to the other end and I have to count as high as I know how. Sometimes I get all the way to three, maybe four. They have that amount of time to build a strategy and a plan among themselves. Okay. So you guys want to... Come in, guys. Let's plan away. Plan, plan, plan. Kurt, come around here, huddle. bud. Huddle. What? Huddle. Call huddle. Huddle. Okay, what's our plan? More than me, I don't know. Run. <laughs> uh... If you have enough people, you actually okay. would put two attackers on my end of the arena. Uh, if you have more than 10, you can put three attackers. You can kind of make it and adjust it as much as you want to do whatever you want. Now, because of the cameras, we're trying to stay inside the, inside the buckets that we've marked the arena so that we're close enough to the cameras. Typically, we use the whole arena. There's no markers. But for now, we're trying to be close to the cameras. So we've set those markers up. There's no rules for going yeah, outside. Okay. That's just what we're trying to do. Oh, here he goes, guys. Go get him, Jesse. Good. This could get... Oh, please. Get on the other side of me, Lise. Don't there. So now Lisa's got to turn that whip off. Cut him off. 
and that yes, person has to, one of you has to take her, no, no, one of you has to take her whip. Okay. And during that time, yeah. I have a little bit more of a free reign. Out? You're out. You have to go to the sideline, sister. Stay in the middle. Jesse's pretty good at getting in my way here. So I gotta read, there we go. I gotta read my arena and try to get between Jesse, there we go. All right, so no, Trent, no, Trent, you take yours with you. Trent, take your whip with you. Every two riders, a whip goes out, okay? All right, so I've got two whips left to find. Oh, wow, that was an impact. And, oh, Dee Dee's on a slightly more broke horse than I am. <clears throat> My horse, I think, will trot a little faster than... Ah! Oh no! Oh! What's that doing giggle? And there! I got him! All right, I'm down to one defender, one whip. Oh no. Yes, 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 hey, 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 speed limit imposed. You should get a traffic phone. What is this? Do you not realize you're loping there? This is slow loping at its best. Now you have to be careful. You can kind of get in the moment and start kind of pulling and pushing. So I want to take a minute to soften my horse up. You can tell my wife's slightly competitive <laughs> and she's willing to change the rules. Get back. And there. All right. All right, come on, Lisa. Let's get Jess. Oh, Jess is on a pretty handy little horse here. I'm on kind of a, a colt here. This is a four-year-old horse that I really like, but he's not as handy. There we go. He's getting, oh, don't lope. He's getting the idea. Did she get you? That was close. Jess is pretty aggressive here. She'll, she'll put it. Oh, I left Trent out there abandoned and she gets him. Here, Trent, hand off. <laughs> Jess goes on the hunt. She's pretty, she's pretty competitive herself. Oh, shoot. Don't you get out of breath? I'm just about that quick. I'm out. All right, so I take my whip with me and we leave. No, oh, Dee Dee's out. Dee Dee brings her whip. We got Lisa and Kurt surviving. The idea is you don't want it to get too wild and dangerous, but you're trying to have fun with your horses. Give your horses something to do. Give them a job and they're gonna enjoy themselves a lot more. You're gonna enjoy yourself. You're gonna start forgetting about the little things that make you nervous. You might say, well, if I carried a whip around my horse, he'd go berserk. Well, spend a little time, get him used to it, and you'll notice once you start playing the game, he's gonna get into it and he's gonna enjoy it. And that's all there is to it. Oh, she got him. All right. Gratefulness. It's expressing feelings of appreciation. Sometimes just the fact that I was born in America leaves me with such a feeling of gratefulness that I can barely find words or emotions to explain it. When I think about daily the men and women who put their lives in harm's way to give me the rights that I exercise daily, I cannot help but be grateful. I take that even further back. When I think about the sacrifice of Christ on the cross for me, for the redemption of my sins, I cannot help but feel grateful for who I am as a result of who he was. It's not always easy to feel grateful. 
right? Sometimes th those are two great examples that all of us can kind of connect with. But, but there's times when feeling grateful isn't what's on our minds. I frequently go to the scripture, Romans 8, 28, where the writer tells us, all things work together for good to those who know the Lord and are the called according to his purposes. That's not always easy to remember. It sounds good, but boy, sometimes it's tough. You might be in the hospital with a loved one. You might be at the bank because you're in trouble. You might be having a real bad day with your horse. It doesn't matter what the situation is. I have to stop myself and say right now, Ken, you don't feel grateful for this. You, you don't feel any gratitude. You're not happy right now, but you've got to remember if all things work together for good, all things to those who know the Lord and are the called according to his purposes, then that means this too. And even though I can't see the eventual outcome where this is going to be a good thing in my life, I'm going to be grateful for it right now. It's not always easy to be positive. It's not always, certainly I by no means have a, a achieved a level of perfection, but I try to remind myself of these, these things. And that's why the scripture is so important to have it memorized so that when times like that happen, it pops into your head and you have the chance to say, okay, wait, stop. Here's where we are. Let's pick up from here. I'm going to be grateful for where I'm, because I am still a child of God and I am still living in the greatest country on earth. And I'm thankful for those things. You know, I say it frequently, the best way to enjoy horses is with your family. And we have so much fun here. We encourage you to do the same thing. I'm so thankful for the friends and loved ones I have that uh, tolerate my bad habits and come out here and enjoy these times with me. I'm so thankful for you, our viewers. You faithfully watched our show for so many years. Thank you so much. And until next time, may God bless the trails you ride. Ha ha, I ain't got a whip. Oh, oh just that fast. Here, Didi. No, take it, Trent, take it. I'll ride in Defender. Oh, oh. oh, oh. All right, no speed limit. Find out more about Ken McNabb horsemanship at KenMcNabb.com. That one true horse, the perfect partner.